welcome to Senior Circuit. I'm Ashley Spiliotis, the Director of the Somerville Council on Aging. And I thank you for your time and joining us today. We're gonna to be talking about access to food or food access as it's commonly called and different resources in our community. And we're joined today by Lisa Robinson, the Director of Shape Up Somerville. Welcome Lisa, how are you today? Hi Ashley, thanks for having me. I'm doing well, it's summer, so I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited and <laughs> getting ready to transition your services a little bit. We've heard a lot if you'd like to share what Shape Up Somerville is and what you've been busy doing um, during the months of the pandemic with us. And then we can talk a little bit about what's coming up in the months ahead, especially those mobile markets we always see. Sure, definitely. Yes. So hopefully many of the viewers know us and our team, myself and Erica Satin Hernandez of Shape Up Somerville. And we're an office in the city of Somerville for Health and Human Services. And we think a lot about how to support residents in being the healthiest they can be. And we think a lot about that from upstream approaches, preventative approaches through, you know, healthy, good food and safe um, and active play and mobility. And we partner with other city departments as well as other community partners. We do a lot when we, we think about like policies and program and practices that sort of shape sort of the behind the scenes that help people who uh, to achieve sort of their, their health and healthy communities. Um, but during the pandemic, yeah, it shifted a bit and we were thinking about like some direct food provision. Um, I don't, many people might have heard, but you know, we were able to stand up a extra food pantry delivery service, particularly in those early months when we knew people would be home, more homebound, not able to go and leave their houses to get food. So with a lot of community support, a ton of volunteers, a lot of uh, city colleagues as well, we um, operated March through end of June, delivering food provided by the Greater Boston Food Bank and food for free um, to people's homes. And I'll just say that that whole program has transitioned to Project Soup now and they have grown their food delivery service where it was 15 homes a month before the pandemic. And now they're delivering to about 200 or so homes each month. Yeah, this is just really amazing how much they've grown and how much your organization was really helpful, especially to our seniors during the pandemic. Um, we've ran into a lot of people across the community, seniors and younger folks alike, whether they were touched by COVID or uh, an inability to get to the grocery store or some lack of transportation. And you were always a great resource and health and human service colleague to be able to call on your agency and get bags of food delivered and the fresh produce, which was really um, difficult to get sometimes during those months. And it's still been really amazing how now it's taken over um, by different organizations in the community. And I know it's not under your direction, but from what I hear, people can just go right um, to the food for free resource and pick up or call, or would they still go through you for a referral? Yeah, so they would, there's actually a few things going on and they all have sort of food or in the, mm -hmm. in the name, but um, they can go directly to uh, Project Soup's website or give them a call and I can provide that number. Mm -hmm. um, and they can, if they, are finding that they still need food delivery, they can call and talk to a person to see if they're eligible. Or yeah, they can go right to the food pantry on Cross Street as well. Food for Free though is actually doing a, um, a staples box over the summer that I can provide more detail about, but they, um, they're doing a lot of staples and it will include a lot of fresh produce at various parts throughout the city as well. Yeah, that's amazing. I know with the Council on Aging, we have our food staple right. box as well, which is still in the delivery mode of getting to people's homes. But it really is that shelf stable, extra food items that can really make the difference in getting people to carry over through the month. But a lot of times it is that fresh produce that um, people struggle with a little bit. And um, 
it comes at a time when we're talking about it where the mobile markets and the farmer markets are gearing up. So why don't you share what's planned for the summer? Sure. Yes. The summer and, you know, this time of year is always a great time to find a lot of uh, fresh and affordable produce. So it's uh, wonderful. And the mobile market really contributes to that as well. So many people watching probably have shopped at the mobile market, but for anyone not familiar, the mobile market is run through our office and it is a way to try to um, expand our local food network in Somerville and to do it in an affordable way that supports farmers as well and is uh, listening to shoppers and providing what people want. Um, we're actually in our 11th season, which just is amazing to me. And we've been heading, uh, we go to two sites on Fridays and two sites on Saturdays. And I like to say we're a farmer's market on wheels. Of course, we're a little different than a farmer's market because we um, aggregate the farmer produce and we um, have one place for checkout, which is a little different than a farmer's market where you kind of shop at different farms and check out at each spot. Um, but the point is, is that we bring the produce to where the people are. Um, we partner with four farms and um, Groundwork Somerville is a major partner, which is a nonprofit located in Somerville. And then we also work with Oakdale Farms and World Farmers, which I can talk more about. Um, but yeah, we at on Fridays, we are in front of the tab building at Council on Aging and we try to uh, target shoppers before they go into uh, bingo, which I guess we should talk about and make sure that we can, <laughs> as everyone returns to sort of in-person programming, make sure we're coordinated yeah. on that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, you've been a great um, staple in our parking <laughs> lot, I would say, for the last few years, um, and a wonderful partnership where folks from Tufts University and the other patrons of the TAB building and our uh, patrons over at the Council on Aging can get their produce, right, and come up and access our services and um, it's just been a pleasure to have you there and local and convenient because sometimes the other farmers markets are not close to people's homes or not close to where they are. So it's a, a great service that you can travel around and have everything really contained because from what I can see from it, you have different offerings um, each week. And is it always um, based on what the farms have or what's in season? How do you determine what's included at the market? Yes. So um, it, you're right. It's uh, because it's for local farms, it's what's in season. So you're going to find what's available in New England in you know the spring through summer and fall months. Um, and a lot of times it's really, it's really interesting because it depends on what's happening with the weather as well. Um, but, you know, in early spring, you will find a lot of leafy greens from bok choy to callaloo. Um, sometimes we have spinach, we'll have scallions, radishes are always a fan favorite. And then in the peak of uh, summertime, we have um, lots of lots of stuff there. So peaches, corn, uh, peppers, zucchini, eggplant, the list goes on and on. And then in the fall, you know, we'll have apples, squash, um, potatoes, onions, lots of items. And I should mention that one thing I always learn is that we've missed the strawberry season, but the blueberry season, uh, we do hit. And the, our blueberry farmers are two Somerville residents actually who have a little farm, I think in Western Mass. And it's always a little bit of hit or miss depending on what uh, the spring has done. So there was one year where it was a really rain rainy spring. So we weren't able to have any blueberries. So fingers crossed that we'll have blueberries at the start of the Absolutely. market. Absolutely, Yeah, something to look forward to and help us plan our meals with and help us stay, um, you know, right up with the seasons. But you mentioned a little bit before um, of trying to make farmers markets affordable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's um, what we run into a lot of times with our constituents is that it's not so much even just the farmers market, but that is, is expensive to eat healthy and stay healthy and produce can sometimes go bad very quickly. Um, and there's a, 
if you're having trouble getting transportation to the grocery store, it's hard to keep, make it last. So are there any programs? I know that we work with Somerville Cambridge Elder Services um, very closely and they provide some farmer's market coupons. So right. a coupon booklet of $25 to last you throughout the season to offset some of that cost. Um, right. Or is there anything accepted by your mobile market or any programs that you have in the works to help defray cost? Oh, yes, definitely. And thanks for asking that question, because I forgot to mention that's a big piece of the market is trying to make um, it available and accessible for people. And we don't just mean where people are, but also making um, it priced at a you know reasonable price price that people mm -hmm. it helps sort of stretch the budget so in addition to us trying to just um be reasonable with our prices we offer a 50 percent discount also known as a match for all who want it and we've been able to actually since the pandemic uh change it so that the default is that everyone receives the match uh, or the 50 percent discount unless uh they opt out of it in addition, we accept cash, we accept debit, credit, we accept uh, SNAP, Pandemic EBT, WIC coupons, and um, Senior Farmers Market coupons, which you mentioned as well. Um, I did also just want to mention, you're right that, uh, that farm uh, products can sometimes be more expensive because they're locally grown. Um, you know, there's a lot of people and uh, labor that goes into making sure that they get to these farmers markets. And so something that we've been able to do recently with the other farmers markets is have a $15 uh, snap match citywide. So Union Square Farmers Markets, uh, Davis Square Farmers Market, and the Winter Farmers Market all now have a $15 snap NPEBT match. And what's great is that means that foods, it's not just produce that's available, uh, for that, it's also um, like your fresh proteins, dairies, things like that. Anything that's accepted by SNAP. Um, sure. Yeah. yeah, I just want to um, make sure I understand that correctly. And my prior work with SNAP, or what is more commonly referred to as food stamps. Yeah. Um, so if a person is qualified for food stamps or has their food, well, actually has their food stamp card with them right. and pays using it at a farmer's market, um, I believe it's a certain amount they spend after they spend a certain amount, $15 will automatically go back on their um, food stamp card. Um, there's, there's actually two different programs. Two different programs. Great. I'll, I'll break it down for you. Yes, break it down for <laughs> us. <laughs> so the snap match means that you would go to the market manager's table and mm -hmm. you can decide how much you want to swipe on your snap card. It can be up to $15. And that means that if you swipe $15, you get matched $15. That means now you have $30 in tokens to spend at any farmer's uh, booth. Mm -hmm. And then there's what you're referring to is the healthy incentive program, also called HIP. Mm -hmm. And that's actually unique in Massachusetts. It's really amazing to see Great. collectively mm -hmm. Massachusetts pull this off. But if you have SNAP, you automatically have HIP. And that is what you were talking about, where if you want to purchase vegetables or fruit, that's what's eligible for the HIP at farmer's markets, the mobile market, or through a CSA which is a box of food, essentially, mm -hmm. um, then you pay for it with your SNAP card. And then that money up to 40 to 60 to $80, depending on your household size, mm -hmm. gets put back onto your SNAP card immediately. So you're essentially getting free produce uh, up to a monthly allotment for the season. And again, it's just a creative way, that's it's right. sort of a small investment, a creative way to mm -hmm. support people in eating healthy. And that's what we hear over and over is that, you know, people want to be eating healthy, but sometimes on a tight budget, it just makes it harder to do that. And we have found that the pandemic has really stretched many people's budgets. Or that's I'm sorry, right. not stretched, but hard in them. Tight exactly in them. what you, yeah. But, exactly. But I think that, 
um, there's a lot out there and sometimes people don't realize what they qualify for or don't realize the benefits that they have to the fullest extent. And that's what we're here at the Council on Aging for. So if there is a question, if you um, believe you may qualify for food stamps to reach out to us and to say, you know, let's run some of the numbers and see what you qualify because mm -hmm. there's programs a, you know, getting on one program can bounce you to get on another program. And then before you know it, you have a network of safety out there. Um, right. Especially, and I know Lisa, you also want to talk, you have some great programs, our joint program between our two offices for transportation to these farmers market. Mm -hmm. Yes. So again, you know, sort of in the height of the pandemic, one of the things we were hearing with the pantry delivery is that people could leave the house, but they were having some transportation barriers. And so you and I uh, separately, but we're working in partnership now, um, received funding from MAPC to for a cab program. And we're working with yellow and green cab and anyone who needs a ride can get to food and they can also get to non-emergency medical appointments. Um, but most people use the cab rides to get to the grocery store or to the food pantry. And sometimes we'll call up the cab and say, Hey, can you pick up this, um, food and deliver it to this household? So they've been a great partner. I think we often forget that it does apply for the farmer's markets as well. And what's neat is that during the pandemic, we've all been pushed to think, to do more pre-ordering, to set up systems, to be able to accept pre-ordering. So the farms at the farmer's markets have been able to accommodate that more with that curbside pickup. Mm -hmm. And some of the farm vendors at Union Square and Davis Square continue to have that. So for example, Kimball Farms, which is at both uh, Davis and Union Square have a pre-order system. So people could even call, they could get the cab to go to the farmer's market, do their shopping themselves and, you know, take the cab home. If they were looking for a quicker visit or didn't really feel comfortable quite yet in a larger crowd, they could um, order their food ahead of time and get the cab to just pick it up curbside and hop back in the cab and go home as well. Yeah, I think you touched upon a lot there. Um, Maybe just to <laughs> highlight for our seniors that our transportation programs are merging come July 1st and seniors will now be able to not only get to their routine medical appointments mm -hmm. and to grocery shopping, but they'll also be able to use the taxi transportation to get to our local farmers markets. And also what you touched upon is that beyond the mobile market where it's traveling around the city, there are other farmers markets available in Somerville. And um, I don't know. I know they're not quite under your purview, but if you'd like to share the other locations and set up the those farmers markets as well. Sure. Yeah. So um, yes, I've been alluding to it. So I Union Square Farmers Markets, they, they, I keep saying farmers market, Union Square Farmers Market. They are on Saturdays in Union Square from nine to 1 p.m. And they have reserved the first 30 minutes for seniors or anyone uh, at higher risk at COVID. Davis Square Farmers Market is in Davis at, on Wednesdays from 12 to 6, and they also have reserved the first 30 minutes for seniors and anyone at, at higher risk for COVID. Great. When do the farmers markets start? What, the, in July or August? Yes, yes. So the farmers markets, uh, the Union Square and the Davis start in May and run through November. The mobile market, our market, We'll start July 9th. So look for us Friday in front of the TAD building, July 9th, and we go through mid October. Um, a fun fact, actually, now we're sort of throwing a lot of different locations out there, but mm -hmm. a fun fact is that when you consider the Mobile Market, Union Square Market, Davis Square Farmers Market, and the Winter Market um, that's at the Armory, we have markets that are in six out of the seven wards in Somerville and run, I think I was think, calculating uh, 38 weeks a year. Mm -hmm. Great. So to carry you almost the whole year through. 
mm-hmm. basically to have different options out there and and different places to go. Um, and I've noticed in some, uh, they have little recipes they send through when we're working with the Greater Fo- uh, Boston Food Bank. They send little recipes for the um, vegetables that might not be as familiar to most. But um, I also wanted to touch base about things that have certainly changed over the last year and you set up your market in um, a different way to meet the needs of COVID and keep everybody safe. Is, are we going to see any changes again this year or what should people expect when they arrive to the market? It's a great question. Yes. I feel really lucky that we were able to pull off the market last year. One of the reasons is uh, Rachel, our market manager returned. Um, so that was great. She was familiar with the market pre COVID and was able to help us think about ways to adapt it to adhere to the extra safety uh, protocols to keep everybody safe. This year, we're hoping to return to pre-pandemic operations, meaning that people can be uh, choosing their own produce again. What we heard last year when people had to sort of stand in line and order their food and then it was bagged by Rachel, we heard, you know, I want to pick out my own produce, which I totally get. You know, you want to the right size, the right quality, ripeness, whatever you're looking for. And so we're able to bring that back. We will be asking people to be patient because we're going to limit the number of people in that smaller space so that, you know, we can still sort of adhere to social distancing. Um, But what we will have is some boards that highlight what's on sale that day and the prices so people can start be start planning what they want to purchase ahead of time while they wait. We will have um, masks, masks will be encouraged and we will have a uh, hand sanitizer available for anyone who wants it. Mm-hmm. Great, so uh, uh, easing a little bit as we're seeing throughout the community, but still a uh, conscientious effort to make sure everybody remains vigilant and everybody remains safe as, we ease back in into reopening. And you mentioned before also that there is a way at the other farmers markets um, to pre-order or to have pickup. Um, is there a certain website people should go to or they can call in the order? How would you pre-order? And is that available at the mobile markets? Great questions. So at the other farmers markets, if you go on their website, you they have a list of vendors that still accept pre-order. And then if you click on those links, that will show you how you can get in touch with the farm themselves. Usually there's an online order form or a number you can call. Mm-hmm. We are, we're starting to think this through a bit more detail with the mobile market, thinking if there are, there are people who, any shoppers who don't want to stand in line or you know have a hard time standing in line, um, thinking about if we can, exchange numbers and have our market manager who's who is Alec this year give a call uh, middle of the wink what's once we know what we're receiving to take an order ahead of time and then um, have it available for someone to swing by and pick it up so I think Mm -hmm. we're going to see if we can accommodate that Yeah, absolutely. Always changing and thinking on your feet and responding to the needs of the community. But the market is very impressive how you pull up in your um, (laughs) van, I should say, and set up the tents. And there is plenty of room down um, for people to come visit at the tab building to spread out. And there are some benches there for people to wait and think about what they may want want Mm -hmm. to order. So um, really, Lisa, thank you for all your work throughout the winter and summer and our partnership. And um, we will post your information if anybody has any other questions. And of course, um, we're here and available at the Council on Aging to talk more about food access and food resources and how we can um, provide different different options for the community to remain and stay healthy. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.